Hello students, uh, in today's video we will discuss pharmacology of uh, high ceiling loop diuretics and uh, before starting discussing loop diuretics let us uh, first quickly revise uh, function of kidneys and role of diuretics. Now uh, look at this diagram, uh, this diagram shows a uh, structure of nephron and uh, these are the uh, peritubular capillaries and these peritubular capillaries are also termed as vasa recta. Now the most important function of kidneys is to filter and purify blood and remove waste toxic products of the body in the form of urine. Now structural and functional unit of kidney is the nephron. Now each kidney consists of around 1 million nef nephrons and the main function of kidney is to produce urine. Now there are three main steps in the formation of urine namely the glomerular filtration then selective reabsorption and secretion. Now blood in the glomerulus is filtered and the filtrate passes into the tubule of nephron. Now around 180 liters of filtrate is produced daily by both the kidneys. Now this filtrate uh, consists of more than 90 percent water. Uh, then waste toxic products like urea, uric acid, creatinine along with the useful substances like glucose, amino acids, uh, vitamins, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium etc. Now all these essential substances uh, that are required along with the water is reabsorbed. Uh, it is reabsorbed from the uh, lumen into the luminal epithelial cells and from the luminal epithelial cells all the required substances they move to the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta and thus all these required substances they reach the blood circulation. Now thus around 99% of the filtrate uh, is returned to the blood circulation and this reabsorption of filtrate maintains the blood volume and uh, the pH of blood. Now reabsorption of water primarily depends on the reabsorption of sodium. Now water is reabsorbed isoosmotically that is for every molecule of sodium that is reabsorbed is accompanied by reabsorption of molecule of water and thus when the sodium is reabsorbed uh, the water follows. Uh, that means water follows higher sodium concentration. Now very important to remember that uh, out of 180 liter of filtrate only 1 to 1.5 liter of urine is produced. That means uh, rest uh, of the filtrate that is 99 percent of the filtrate is reabsorbed um, in this uh, renal tubule. At the different sites like uh, the proximal convoluted tubule here uh, 65 to 70 percent of sodium and water is uh, uh, reabsorbed. Uh, then this is the descending loop of Henle here 15 percent of uh, water is reabsorbed. Uh, this is the ascending limb of uh, loop of Henle here around 25 percent of uh, sodium is reabsorbed. Now this is the early distal tubule here uh, around 5 percent of sodium and 8 percent of uh, uh, the uh, content uh, water content of the filtrate is uh, reabsorbed. Uh, now this is the late uh, distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct here around 3 percent of uh, uh, sodium is absorbed and apart from this water is also absorbed. Now absorption of uh, water is tightly regulated by antidiuretic hormone in the collecting duct whereas absorption reabsorption of sodium is regulated by the aldosterone. So this is how at different sites uh, water and uh, sodium is reabsorbed from the renal tubule into the renal uh, into the luminal epithelial cells and from the luminal epithelial cells sodium along with the water moves into the peritubular capillaries or vasa recta and from here uh, sodium as well as water they reach the blood circulation and this is how the blood volume and the pH of blood is maintained. Now uh, diuretics are the agents that uh, act upon kidney uh, and they increase the volume of urine thereby reducing the volume of blood. Now uh, what the uh, diuretics uh, do is this that di diuretics decrease uh, the reabsorption of uh, sodium 
as well as the reabsorption of water from the lumen into the peritubular capillaries. Thus, diuretics are the agents that uh, cause net loss of sodium and water in the urine. Now, since these diuretics, they increase the volume of urine, they reduce the volume of blood, they are primarily useful in the management of edema and hypertension. Uh, now, let's uh, talk about high ceiling loop diuretics. Uh, these are sulfur moil derivatives. Examples are furosemide, bumetanide, tosemide, and the prototype drug is furosemide. Now, diuretics, as discussed earlier, are the agents that act on kidneys to make more uh, urine. And these agents, they cause a net loss of uh, sodium and water in the urine. That means they prevent the reabsorption of sodium and water uh, from the tubular lumen into the peritubular capillaries. Now, furosemide is a, a loop diuretic as its uh, site of action is uh, ascending limb of loop of Henle. And uh, these agents are also called as a uh, high ceiling diuretics since uh, these agents are more effective than the other diuretics. Now, furosemide primarily decreases uh, sodium uh, chloride and potassium reabsorption from the tubule of nephron into the peritubular capillaries. Uh, it is an inhibitor of uh, sodium potassium chloride co-transport. Now, furosemide is a rapidly acting highly efficacious oral diuretic and uh, diuretic response increases with increasing dose. And uh, furosemide is effective even in patients with relatively severe renal failure. And uh, furosemide has a, a prompt onset of action. IV furosemide produces diuretic effect in 2 to 5 minutes. Intramuscularly, it produces its effect in 10 to 20 minutes. And uh, oral dosage form produces uh, uh, the response in 20 to 40 minutes. It has a short duration of action of about 3 to 6 hours. Uh, now, let's uh, discuss uh, mechanism of action of uh, high ceiling uh, loop diuretics. Now, major site of action of these diuretics is the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Now, look at this diagram. Uh, it shows a lumen of uh, nephron, then luminal epithelial cell of ascending limb of loop of Henle and uh, peritubular capillaries. Now, this luminal epithelial cell has two surfaces. One is the apical surface. This is the apical surfaces facing the lumen of nephron and this is the basolateral surface close to uh, vasa recta that is the peritubular capillaries. Now, this diagram shows uh, sodium potassium uh, 2-chloride co-transporter. Now, this protein is responsible for the transportation of sodium, chloride and potassium from the filtrate to the epithelial cell. And uh, these ions, uh, that is the sodium, chloride and potassium, they are further transported to the blood. Uh, that means further transported to the peritubular capillaries. Now, very important to remember that around 25% of sodium is reabsorbed in thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. And furosemide inhibits uh, sodium potassium 2 chloride co transport. And uh, this prevents, uh, it inhibits uh, re reabsorption of sodium. And there is a net loss of sodium and water in the urine. Now, this increases uh, the volume of urine and uh, therefore, uh, furosemide by inhibiting sodium potassium 2 -chlor chloride co-transport exerts its uh, diuretic effect. It increases the volume of urine. Now, intravenous furosemide also increases local prostaglandin synthesis. Now, as we all know, these prostaglandins, they are vasodilators. They dilate the renal blood vessels and uh, therefore, uh, furosemide increases renal blood flow. Apart from this, uh, there is dilation of veins. Now, dilation of veins uh, causes increase in uh, systemic uh, venous uh, capacitance and uh, dilation of uh, uh, other veins like superior vena cava, inferior vena cava decrease left ventricular uh, filling pressure and this provides relief in left ventricular failure and associated pulmonary edema.
Now, furosemide also increases excretion of calcium and magnesium, uh, whereas it decreases the excretion of uric acid. Now, uh, this was about the prototype drug that is the furosemide. Uh, other loop diuretics also exhibits the same mechanism of action. Now, talking about the bumetanide, it is 40 uh, times more potent than uh, furosemide and uh, bumetanide is used in cases not responding to furosemide and in patients not tolerating furosemide. Uh, apart from that, tosemide is uh, three times more potent than uh, furosemide. Uh, now, let us uh, talk about the therapeutic uses of uh, loop diuretics. Now, first and the foremost is used in edema as uh, loop diuretics reduce the blood volume. Uh, loop diuretics are effective in edema irrespective of the etiology of uh, edema. Uh, they are very useful in cirrhotic, hepatic and uh, renal edema. Now loop diuretics are the drug of choice in nephrotic and resistant uh, edema. Now in impending or uh, uh, suspected uh, case of acute renal failure, loop diuretics may reduce uh, the need of dialysis. Now, apart from this, as discussed earlier, uh, furosemide uh, dilate the veins. Mm, it dilates superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, reducing the uh, left ventricular filling pressure and provide a quick relief in left ventricular failure and associated pulmonary edema. Now, apart from this, very important, uh, diuretics reduce the blood volume. Uh, fall in the blood volume reduces cardiac output. Now, as we all know, blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into peripheral resistance. Fall in blood volume reduces uh, cardiac output, reduces blood pressure. So, uh, diuretics are useful in the management of uh, hypertension. Now, loop diuretics are effective uh, in the management of uh, hypertension in the presence of renal insufficiency, congestive heart failure, and also in hypertensive crisis. Uh, now, let us uh, understand the adverse effects of uh, loop diuretics. Now, one of the major adverse effects is hypokalemia. Now, loop diuretics, as we have already discussed, inhibit reabsorption of sodium in ascending limb of loop of Henle. So, sodium is not uh, reabsorbed uh, from the loop of Henle. So, sodium is passed in the filtrate and this filtrate which is rich in the sodium reaches the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct and there the sodium is reabsorbed in exchange of potassium. So, sodium is reabsorbed while the potassium is excreted and therefore, uh, uh, since uh, this uh, potassium is excreted in the urine, uh, this results in hypokalemia. And uh, additional use or adjuvant use of potassium sparing diuretics can reduce the incidence of hypokalemia. Now, rarely uh, these drugs can cause autotoxicity and uh, hypokalemia has been found to reduce the secretion of insulin and uh, which can cause hyperglycemia. Drop in the blood volume can cause hypovolemia and uh, uh, loss of electrolytes uh, in urine can cause electrolyte imbalance. Loss of calcium causes hypocalcemia. Then hyperuricemia is also observed with these drugs. And since these drugs are sulfur drugs, allergy to sulfur drugs can also occur. So this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, loop diuretics. And uh, please note that the information provided in this e video is exclusively for students from their examination point of view. So kindly consult your physician with regards to the clinical use of diuretics. Now, if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this uh, video. Thanks for watching this video.